Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So today I'm actually working on the postcard for my Patreon and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But today I wanted to focus on a piece that would have a very glowing effect. I've talked about this in the past where I love when things glow and in digital art it's very easy to make things glow because it's easy to add light shapes on top of dark and to blend things that way. But when it comes to watercolor, it's a little bit trickier. And I have struggled with that in the past. And I've always wanted to be able to incorporate that into my watercolor pieces since it is something that I love so much in artwork. So today is a little bit more of a practice thing on trying to figure that out and how to make it work with the type of fabrics that I use and the way that I like to blend colors. So. I will give a few things that I did learn about it today, but first off, I am using my Micron pens to line this one and most of it is in this really bright green color, which I actually really like how that color goes with certain blues and a couple greens that I have in my watercolor palette. So this is kind of a, a fun pen to be able to bust out. It's not always applicable to a lot of my pieces that I use, but it's fun when I can actually use it because it is like this really bright color. Uh, but I also did a bunch of color comps. Well, actually, I think I only did four, so maybe it's not a bunch, but I did do four color comps. And if you'd like to see those, those are also listed on my Patreon. But I actually had a pretty clear idea in my head of what I wanted this one to look like. I wanted it to look like those old absinthe posters from the turn of the century. I love the look of them. You can find a lot of them on Patreon, but they're very green and glowing and otherworldly and I wanted that to be apparent in this piece so that was something that I knew right off the bat I wanted the grill the glow effect to be green and to be this really bright candy not candy apple bright <laughs> granny smith apple I guess green color I actually have this really gorgeous green that I love to use I'm probably using it a little bit too much lately but I will list that one down in the description since I use it so heavily in this piece so a few things that I learned about the glowing effect is, and this is something that actually doesn't really come out in the final piece because the way that I blended it in the color comps, it, I was blending from this glowing effect on her dress into a very dark dress. And I basically did exactly what it sounds like. I put the very saturated bright green closest to where the color and the light would be radiating from. And then I just, let that blend and meld into the darker color. And that's obvious, I know, but it's something that I have a hard time with when it comes to watercolors because I, I think about watercolors in a very linear way. I have a hard time blending very different colors together or even just letting them do their own thing. So I tend to avoid this kind of a technique where I let the watercolors mingle and become what they're going to become. And I think that I'm missing out on a lot of opportunities with watercolor because they do offer some really amazing qualities to them. That's one of the things that's really great about watercolors, but I have a hard time actually making it work. But in this where I was really trying to get that glow effect, it was pretty much necessary. I needed to make sure that they were creating this highlight around where I wanted it to be, but also that it could blend into a really dark color. That's something that I want to do a lot of. I don't want it to be where the highlight is a darker color than the rest of the shape, if that makes sense. One of the things, one of the areas in this painting that I think I could have done a little bit better is the dress that she's wearing. I have the glow of the green on there, but I think that I could have had a little bit more of a halo of bright reflection closest to the bottle maybe where it was a little bit closer to white and then it blended into that green color. I think that would have helped it look a little bit more of a a glow. I'm going to say glow like 800 times in this video. So I apologize for that. But I think that that would have really helped it push a little bit more. Whereas in this piece, I went with that green color right up to the bottle and then blended that into her basically white dress. So I think I could have executed that better. But for the most part, getting that color and that reflection on it really does help a lot with creating a little bit more of this atmospheric quality to it. And another thing that I tried to focus a little bit more on in this is I tried to make sure that I was very strategic with the way that I was 
creating these gradients within the local color. So I made sure that the edges that were closest to the source of the light, that was the closest to green and the closest to that color. And then as it traveled away, I created a gradient between that and the local color of the object itself. So like for the skin, I focused most of that bright yellow green on the bottom of her jaw and the bottom of her nose and the planes of the face that would be facing that. And then as it receded away, it became more blue. And also another thing to remember, which is not something I am competent at, but it is something to remember is that when objects are closer to the source of the light, it will be obviously brighter and also more saturated. And as they get farther away, they'll become less saturated and more of the natural color of the shape itself. And I think my favorite detail to paint in this one was actually the highlight on the bottle. I had a lot of fun really creating these more expressive shapes with it. And that was one of the details that really transformed the piece. Before it was kind of, meh, it was not there. The glowing effect of the bottle wasn't there. The bottle really wasn't that convincing. But once I went in with these highlights that covered up some of the shapes behind, like the shape of herself and her dress and her hair, where the bottle will see through. Once I added that highlight that was opaque over all of it, it helped give a little bit more hierarchy to the piece, but it also made the bottle shiny and it made everything just come together in a way that I was really happy with, but I loved creating more organic shapes with it. And prints of this will actually be a Patreon exclusive. So this is the postcard for this month over at Patreon. So the $10 tier and the $25 tier slash $32 if you're international, those will all include this postcard. So I'm really excited to be able to send this out to all of you guys that are my first month supporters. So thank you so much for all of that support and all of the support you give me here too. I definitely want you to know that I really appreciate everything that you guys do for me. I, again, I'll have a link to everything down in the description, everything that I use to paint this and to all of my links. I also have my PO box listed down below. And that is it for today. If you'd like to own this original painting, I have a link down in the description as well as in the end card that'll take you to my art shop. I also have a link for Patreon and also all the tools that I use to create this painting. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time, which will be on Saturday. Bye.